Hello, well, welcome to my channel once again. Today I'm going to show you how you can write a QBasic program to calculate for interest. We will first tackle simple interest and then we we'll go to compound interest. Let's get started. Okay, before we start, make sure QBasic program is properly installed on your computer. So mine is here, let's open. So you open your QBasic program. Now, let's start with variables declaration. Normally, the best practice is by first writing a pseudo code before touching the actual programming. Sample interest first. So we are declaring a variable called principal. So that's the principal. So this is the principal. Let's say principal is 1000. And let's also declare the rate. And let's make it um, 8%. So we are writing 8 divided by 100. Or you can also decide to write rate is equal to 8. And then declare the same rate variable again. And equate it to rate dividing... 100. That means the 8 that we declared on top, we've just replicated the 8 here. So the rate here is the rate on top, and we are dividing it by 100. This works perfectly when we are accepting input from a user. Then we assign our time. So for the time, we are calculating it once per year. So the total time is 3 years. Then we are breaking it according to our calculation. So we will calculate it 3 times. So let's make the time 1. So for now let's try simple interest. The formula for simple interest is I. Let me write it in full. Interest is equal to P. That's the principal. So principal multiplying rates. Then, by time. So when we get it like this, and try to print interest, the shortcut for printing is question mark. So we type question mark, and then we put interest, but make sure variables are case sensitive. So interest. Now let's run our program. So you go to run, then start. Or you can decide to press F5 for shortcut. So let's see the outcome. It is compiling. So let's wait for the feedback. There was nothing. Let's check the reason. We didn't bring the N in the spelling of principal. So let's bring the N there. So principal. Then read time. Let's run it once again. Now you can see we've written our first program on interest. It's working perfectly. So let's go and find out how we will calculate for compound interest. It might be complex, but it's very simple. We are not just going to assign variables, but we are going to get input from a user. So we allow the user to input a principal, input a rate. We are telling the user to input a principal. So let's print something for the user to prompt him or her to input the principal. So we write, please, input your principal. So what are we getting? Input. So input will be the command for, 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 for allowing the user to input something. So now input principal. Obviously, we want the user to input principal. So we write input, then principal. Now, we've printed input your principal on the screen. And then we are accepting principal as a variable from a user. After that, let's clear the screen. 
So when the user inputs a principal, the screen will be cleared. So now we are prompting the user to input rate. So we print please input rate. So after writing that, we accept the input, the actual input. So that's the rate. So we write the input command, then we write rate. Before you do this, make sure that you calculate the time you are given. Maybe when you are given quarterly in a year, then you have to divide the year, 1, by 4. Then you get 0 0.25. Then you use that 0 0.25 to replace the time here. So we are printing to the user input time. But we consider it to be one year, one year, one year. So in our program, when it comes to input time, we will press 1. So please, input time. Now, the input command and then time. So we have declared our principal, declared the rate, and then declared a time. So when the user inputs time, what do we want to do? We want to clear the whole screen. And then at the end of the compound interest calculation, the total amount and then the compound interest, we will show it to the user. Let's continue. Interest is calculated by using the variable i here. So let's consider our question to be three years. So for three years, we are declaring our first interest in the first year, so I1. So interest one is going to be principal, that's user's input principal, then times rate, then times time you see now you know what we need to do to make the program simple let's declare a variable here rate so after the user inputs rate the rate will be automatically converted into percentage so let's declare a variable rate again and assign it to the user's rate divide by 100 so that and then the user inputs a rate, whether 5, 10, 20, or whatever, it will automatically convert into percentage. So let's continue programming. First interest is equal to principal times rate times time. Then our P1, principal 1, we've assigned the first interest I1 to principal times time times rate. This principal here is representing the user's input principal. So let's try running the program and see what it will return. So print interest 1. We are printing I1 to check out whether our program is working or not. Let's see the feedback that we will get from the program after compilation. Let's wait a little while. So you see now, it is prompting the user to input a principal. So let's say the principal is 1,000. And the rate is, let's say, 6. It's automatically converted into percentage. Then time, one year. Now, you press enter. And now you see, it has calculated it for us automatically. So it just gave us the first interest. So let's calculate for compound interest. So let's clear this one. P1 is our principal, not the initial principal. So after the initial principal, let's get our principal 1. P1, let's assign P1 variable to principal 1. So P1 is going to be our initial principal plus I1 plus the interest that we calculated. That is the I1. Now press enter. And then 
we calculate for the second year's interest. The second year's own is going to be I2. The P1 that we've calculated for, the principal 1, not the initial principal, but P1 times rates and then time. But the rate and the time is the one that the user inputted. So that one we are not going to touch it anymore. So it's going to give us our second year's interest. Let's calculate for the second principal. So we got our second interest. So let's add the second interest to our principal to see how much we gain. So now it's going to be P2. We're now finding P2. So now the P2 is going to be this interest too plus the principal 1, the P1 here. So it's going to be P1 plus I2 plus I2, yeah. So our principal 2 is going to be this principal that we got here plus our interest 2. As simple as that. Now, let's continue. It's left with our last interest. Let's find the third year's interest. So we suggest that the question has given us three years. Yeah, that's what we are doing. So we are looping it three times. So now, interest three, that's I3. is going to be our principal two. That's P2 times the same rate and then the same time. Like this. So the final principle, let's assign P3 to it. The variable P3, that's our final principle. It's going to be P2 plus I3. P2 plus I3. The P2 plus the I3 is going to give us, at the end of the three years, the total amount. So we've added all the interest to the principal. That's what P3 is giving us. Print. Hello. Your total amount is... Your total amount is... Now, because P3 is a variable, it doesn't need to be in a double code because it's not a strange. Only strange are put between... Double quotes. So this is the total amount. So now, let's show to the user the total interest, the total compound interest. Let's make it CI. That is compound interest. So the compound interest is going to be I1 plus I2 plus I3. The compound interest is equal to the addition of the whole interest. So I1, I2, I3, when we sum them, we're going to get the compound interest. So let's print to the user the compound interest. So now print total interest is in a quote, then because it's a strange in a quote, then CI. So we are printing to the user the total interest after our calculation is CI, that's compound interest. The program is compiling our code. So it's prompting us to input our principal, let's say 1000 Ghana. And the rate, let's make it. Then time one, because at the end of every year, every single year. So now you see, hello, your total amount is one time one hundred and nine one point zero one six. The compound interest is one nine one point. You see zero one six. So now let's subtract the whole compound interest CI from our P three. So when it shows us our principal that we inputted then that means our program is now perfect.
when we want to check whether our program has actually given us the right amount, we have to subtract our compound interest from our total amount. So let's try that one. P3 minus CI, that's our compound interest. So when we deduct the compound interest from our total amount, we have to get our initial principal. So let's run and see how it is calculated. Now, it's compiling. Let's wait for it. So we got it. Let's input our thousand here. The rate, let's say six percent, and the time one year. So now, when we subtracted the compound interest from the total amount, now we got our thousand. That means the program is working perfectly. We can even make the program nicer by prompting the user to first input their name when the program starts to run. So we can declare a variable called name. Please input your name. Please input your name. Then we write the command input the name. Name is a string. So in QBasic programming, when you want to declare a variable that accepts string, then it's going to be, you have to add a dollar sign at the end of the label. So here, name, we will attach dollar sign to name. So when we come to the bottom of the program, and we are showing the user the total amount, we can decide to add the name. Now we can print hello, then we bring the variable name there. Hello, name. And now, so... We've added name to the information that we will be printing to the user at last. So, hello, name. Your total amount is... Uh -huh, yeah. So, at the end of the compilation, we're giving the user an interesting information by adding the user's name to our test. So you input your name, the principal, thousand rates, let's say six percent, and time one. Hello, King. Your total amount is, you see, it's making the program more interesting. Let me show you one more thing. In QBasic programming, you can use rem command, that is R E M. In QBasic, the rem serves as a comment. So here, let's write rem. Accepting user input. So rem is serving as a comment here. Then we can also add another comment here by saying calculating for compound interest. Or we can add another rem here saying the printing an output to the user, printing the results to the user, or whatever. Give it a more descriptive name. So this making the program readable and clear. So you can save your program by pressing Ctrl plus S. Then you give it a title, Compound Interest. And then you press Enter, then save it. So anytime you want to open your program, you can go to FAR. Then you go to Open. Then you see the Compound Interest is added. So that's all. Thank you for watching. If you have any question, you can put it in the comment section. And I will answer you.